Hello and welcome. Today we are going to look at the Lucitone Digital Print Denture System training. So through this video you will be able to pause and work through each component uh, within your own denture system that you've purchased from Densply Serona. This is a really exciting portfolio uh, but one that really can't be veered off of in terms of the workflow. So we're going to uh, get you through basically how to wash, recycle, clean and fuse all your materials together. So let's get started first with cleaning. So ideally, when you are dealing with digital uh, resins, you should be using proper ventilation and wearing your appropriate PPE. Um, you know, just as a word of caution, it is important to, you know, take that seriously because we are dealing with raw resin here. Uh, now, when it comes out of the printer off of the build tray, you're going to remove the supports that your printer um, would have placed for you. They're really easy to come off. So at that point, you can just discard them, uh, but they should pull off rather easily. There will always be a little bit of residue, but we'll get to that at the time of finishing, so we won't worry too much about that right now. But the main thing is to get rid of all of those supports within the actual job itself, whether that's on printed teeth and the printed bases or just the base if you're using something like the IPN 3D tooth. So once they are removed, you're going to want to place uh, alcohol in the actual containers. Uh, ideally, you should have two containers that can fit uh, the individual denture um, inside of them itself. Uh, now, ideally, you should face the tooth surface down first. Um, and then what you will do is basically place that into the ultrasonic bath. Now, if you are using uh, the ultrasonic bath, it's two minutes to start um, for the first cycle in the alcohol bath. And then it is uh, another minute. If you are using something like the orbital shaker, you will want to add in one more minute to each of them just because it doesn't spin as fast there. So once you put the containers into the ultrasonic bath, you will start that for two minutes here. Now what you will notice is when it comes out of the actual ultrasonic bath, there'll be a lot of kind of white sloughing, as we call it. It's, it's kind of residual resin, of course, that's uncured. So following the two minutes, you'll want to use a brush, uh, preferably a soft paintbrush, to basically be able to get into the intaglio surface and especially the sockets uh, to ensure that you kind of wipe off some of that residue. And then we will be putting it into clean alcohol solution. Okay, it's really important that we put it into a clean uh, bath again for the second cycle so that we're giving it a better opportunity to ensure that all of that residue is gone so that when we go to air dry it we don't have any white film still remaining on the actual jobs whether it's the teeth or the bases or the try-in as well. So here you can see we're just basically using a paintbrush there and cleaning into the crevices of the teeth uh, and then we will do the same thing with the denture base itself. Now, when it comes to recycling the, uh, the alcohol, um, normally what will happen is when people use the first cycle for the two minutes, um, they'll then use it one more time. Uh, but that clean cycle, you really should be updating your alcohol bath each time uh, because we do want, again, clean solution for that second stage when we're putting it back into the ultrasonic for one minute. Now, ideally, when you are doing the ultrasonic bath for the one minute, if you are using the orbital shaker, again, just add in one extra minute. So for that second cycle, it would be two minutes. And again, that first cycle would be three for the orbital shaker. But it's going to go back in, in this point, to the ultrasonic bath. It does work the best. Uh, and we're going to give it one more minute here. Following the one minute... You'll be able to, again, there shouldn't be very much of that residual kind of sloughing resin uh, left over on the try-in or the base or the teeth. However, again, just use uh, your, your paintbrush uh, that's soaked in the clean alcohol to just remove uh, all residual resin. Uh, very easy at this point in time. It shouldn't be too much that's left over given the fact that this is the second clean stage. And again, if there is a lot of residual resin, it's likely that your alcohol bath was a little bit too contaminated for the clean cycle, which is that second one minute stage. So ensure that you are using fresh alcohol each time. And then that's that resin that has been used now can be used for the first cycle one more time, right? So you can try to maximize the use of it, but that clean cycle ideally should be once uh, uh, used once and then replenished with fresh alcohol. Now you also do want to remember at this point in time it is still uncured resin so gloves are super key for that reason. The oils in our hands can actually affect the overall um, you know finish of these materials so just be sure to wear your PPE and that's been the clean stage. 
Now we are able to recycle these materials. So it is really key that we, um, you know, recycle them when needed. If let's say there's another shade or something like that, that we want to take care of, um, you know, or, or another material that we want to utilize in our actual uh, printer, we are able to recycle the material. Now this video in particular is, is the workflow for the carbon printer. So it includes the um, the VAT and the cassette holder that they have uh, specifically. If you are in a SEGA Max UV or Pro 4K, just utilize the same workflow that a SEGA recommends. Um, but at this point, you'll be able to recycle, um, ensuring that all you know extra material that you have isn't going to go to waste, right? Because ideally, we want to maximize what you get out of each one liter bottle. So you'll see that the material is a little bit thicker than others, right? So at this point, you can use a spatula to kind of help guide it along. Um, but you will see that it's a little bit stickier of a consistency, almost like a molasses type material, uh, but maybe a little bit thinner than that. Um, but at this point in time, you'll be able to, again, just try to get rid of uh, wasting any material by maximizing how much resin you use. Now, there's a few types of fuse steps that we're going to be looking at today. The first one is if you're using the IPN 3D teeth. So when it comes to, of course, utilizing the fuse systems, the uh, denture itself is still in its raw state. It's not fully um, you know, cured. So again, proper ventilation, gloves and masks ideally should be worn. So at this point, you're going to want to thoroughly dry, right, to ensure that uh, your uh, resin um, is not still wet from the alcohol bath itself. So what some people will do at this point, what is, once it is fully dry, is doing a just a dry fit of the denture teeth. Ensuring that you know kind of that the socket spacer is enough based on your design in the CAD software. Um, but again, it should be 0 0.17 millimeters um, in your software, whether it's 3Shape, ExoCAD, or InLab. So it should fit pretty well here. Uh, we find that some people, once they get comfortable with this, will skip the dry fit stage. Now, first up for the IPN 3D teeth is using the Fuse Step 1, which is a tissue conditioning agent. So you want to get your electric hot plate to 90 degrees. It will blink while it's heating up and then it will beep at you to let you know that it is fully at the 90 degrees Celsius. At that point in time, you, after giving the bottle of Lucitone Fuse Step 1 a shake, you'll want to pour that into the metal container that it comes with. Now it, will, uh, it should have that foam piece in there to ensure that it's easy to identify the teeth spaces and you want the intaglio surface facing down. So you want to submerge the teeth to ensure that they are fully beneath it. And if you need to top up, you can use the dropper or pour more material in. Um, now you are able to, if there is leftover liquid in that container, just cover it up and you can use it again until it dries out. Uh, if it does look like crystallization or anything like that, um, when you open it like, you know, days later, just put it on the heating plate for a little bit of time. It'll melt again and then it'll be ready for few step one. Now, it's really important that when you have that container on the heating plate, you let it get to the 40 degrees Celsius, and it will tell you so by getting to green on that sticker on the top. Really important that you watch it as well, too, to make sure that it's not going over that 40 degrees. And then what you can do at this point is you can let the teeth air dry and then place them in the tooth uh, storage box that the system comes with. So a few step three, it's available in all the Lucitone Digital Print base shades. So you can match it to, of course, the base uh, that the patient has. Um, and then you're going to use a paintbrush here and basically put, um, you know, and two, two sockets at a time, the um, uh, material of few step two. Um, you want to avoid putting it in all the other sockets next to it. Um, again, when you're first learning, it's ideal to put them, you know, two at a time. Some people do put, uh, you know, all... Uh, the, the entire arch at once, but you usually want to work up to that. Uh, initially at training, we recommend two at a time. Basically place, uh, ensure that you can wipe the area around the margins where some extra material might ooze out of. And then what you want to do is just try to get into the inner proximal space and cover that with your thumb and then tack here for 10 seconds, two teeth at a time on both the buckle and the lingual. So 20 seconds total. Um, and you don't need to do Mississippis or anything like that. Just counting to 10 regularly is sufficient. But what you'll do after the 20 seconds is just continue, you know, right across the arch until you are completed. But again, two teeth at a time. You don't want to overfill the, the sockets, right? You don't need to waste too much material. It is a very strong material when uh, once it's cured. Um, but again, ideal just to do two at a time. Ensure that you're removing the excess around the marginal area because we do need to place what's known as few step three um, following this step. But again, really critical. Just cover that inner proximal area in case a little bit of material has extruded out. Uh, just so that it's not um, partially curing that area. 
Once the arch is done in a well, you want to place fuse step three. That's the kind of uh, sealer at the end, right? So you'll basically take your micro brush and you'll basically go along the marginal area all around the buckle and the lingual, right? This just basically seals off that seam of where the tissue uh, connects with the tooth structure. Okay, following few step three, the denture is now ready for the cure cycle. And this is where we'll use a designated dent splice run a curing unit. Now we do have multiple offerings with this system, the dent splice run a Lucitone digital print denture system. So now we're going to look at fusing when it is a multi-layer PMMA denture tooth from dent splice Rona. Again, the steps remain the same from the IPN 3D teeth. We want to do the dry fit. And then we want to do the few step one, two, and three. Now, often with multi-layer teeth, we are seeing that, you know, often people are doing an entire arch or at least in segments. So at this point in time, you're removing from the actual disc, your arches of teeth or your segments of teeth. Okay. Um, now what you want to ensure is that the sprues are removed, right? So you want to make sure that um, they're, they're removed in a, a setting that the, you know, the aesthetics are going to be good. So usually at this point, um, people will kind of cut a little bit into the interproximal space just to ensure the shape and contour of the teeth are to the, you know, desired platform at this point. Um, so then, you know, people will usually polish, right? Just to give it a little bit of a pre-polish here uh, to ensure that it's a little bit higher uh, shine and things like that. So people will sometimes use like a dye shine and things like that on the multi-layer PMMA. And then what you'll want to do is you'll want to put the full arch into an ultrasonic bath. Okay. Uh, this is key just to give it a good clean and ensure that all that residue from, you know, the high shine or, or pumice, whatever you might've used is all done um, and removed. So then for the dry fit, we're going to ensure that the actual fit is okay of the arch, right? So again, if there was any areas that were of a concern, you would want to address it here now with the carbide burrs and, and polishers and things like that. So you will still use few step one. Okay. Cause again, we're looking at a premium tooth when we're dealing with the dense Plicerona uh, multi-layer PMMA. So same rules apply. Please get the heating plate uh, to 90 degrees and we're going to place the few step one into the metal container. Now, usually if you're doing the multi-layer PMMA, because you won't have individual teeth, you'll just want to remove that blue foam piece and just submerge uh, the intaglio surface down and make sure that that area is completely submerged in the few step one. And then of course we'll put it back the, the lid back on and we'll place it onto the heating plate itself. And again, 40 degrees Celsius, which is roughly four to six minutes. You really want to pay attention to it when it gets to the green marking uh, on the, you know, temperature gauge on the sticker to ensure that, you know, we're getting to the proper temperature, but not too high or too low. We'll let that air dry and then we'll proceed with few step three or sorry, two. <laughs> uh, but now, of course, for this area, you'll want to do the full arch or the segments accordingly. So you want to fill those arches based on the teeth that you have, whether it's segments or an entire arch, you'll fill the sockets accordingly. So then you'll fully seat it. Okay. And then you'll want to use a um, four by four gauze just to wipe around the excess areas to remove that excess resin. Um, and then we will go in with few step three. Okay. Um, so it is important to try to get, you know, rid of as much of that residue as possible. And then you'll use the 10 second cure um, uh, with the UV light again, two teeth at a time, lingual and the buckle surface. Okay. This just, just ensures that nothing shifts while we're doing few step three before the final curing process. Okay. Um, so if you're doing the quadrant again, same thing, you just do quadrant by quadrant, like you do with the individual teeth for IPN 3D and then the 10 seconds, two teeth at a time, buckle and lingual. And you're going to repeat that process for as many segments as you have for the arch itself. You'll quickly learn how much material you want to actually utilize for a few step two. You don't have to use too much, but certainly you don't want to be uh, too thin in that area uh, because it is the main bonding agent. So then few step three, same rules apply as the IPN 3D teeth. You want to go on the cervical area with the micro brush and basically go around the marginal area on both the buckle and the lingual, and then it'll be ready for the curing process at this point in the designated dense place to run a curing unit. 
So the final offering from the Dense Place Journal Lucitone print system is when you're using a printed tooth like the Lucitone Digital Value. When you are fusing a, a resin to a resin, you are able to skip fuse step one. The tooth conditioning agent, you do not want to put on uh, the Lucitone Digital Value, for example. That would essentially, you know, kind of melt that material in its raw state because it is not fully cured at this point. So with the partially cured material, you'll want to actually polish any of the support kind of sprues off of it. Use the diamond disc to ensure that your inner proximal area is adequate for seating and then polish um, and shape and contour those teeth as needed. Okay. Um, at this point in time, usually people are going to remove any debris using the alcohol. Okay. Just to make sure that it's, it's, um, uh, you know, not having any of that, that carbide burr dust or anything like that on it. Uh, they will still dry fit just to ensure proper fit and to ensure that the aesthetics are key. Because again, if they're missing any kind of component from the perspective of aesthetics, they want to take care of that ideally here first before it gets fully seated because minimal uh, finishing you want to do at the end. Okay. Um, so when you do the dry fit, once everything is good, you can go directly to few step two. Okay. So again, with the Lucitone digital value, when you're printing teeth or eventually our IPN 3D resin that's coming out this summer, you will want to ensure that you do not use few step one. Okay. So at this point we just skip right to few step two. We fill the sockets again, based on either a full arch or a segment of teeth, depending on how you've printed your particular arch. And then you're going to basically place the entire uh, printed arch or segments into the sockets. And then same thing like we did for the multi-layer PMMA, we want to remove the excess material that's oozed out of the cervical area. Uh, so ideally using a four by four gauze, some people use a micro brush. It just depends on how much time you want to spend. Uh, and then you'll use the tack here again, 10 seconds per two teeth on both the buckle and the lingual surface. And again, you don't have to count Mississippi's regular counting is fine for this particular reason. Now, uh, same rules apply, obviously, for the quadrant. You just want to do it quadrant by quadrant. Ideally, you do not want to do the full arch all at once if you are doing segments. Uh, just take it by each segment, ideally. Okay, again, this is mainly for the fact of being able to control a little bit better, um, you know, the, the seeding and the process of, of curing with the tack here and everything like that. So you'll tack here here. And then the same rules will apply like we did with our multi-layer uh, PMMA and our IPN 3D resin. You will at this point, uh, once you are done with the tack cure, go in with the few step three. Okay, so again on the cervical area around the margins, you will use your micro brush to basically be able to seal off with the denture sealer. Now with the actual area, um, People will often use a, a paintbrush for this because they actually might glaze the teeth as well too. I did forget about that part. Um, with the uh, few step three, again, people sometimes will put it on the entire tooth just to give it a little bit more shine. Following our fused materials, we are ready for curing. Okay, currently we have the InLab Speed Cure, which is known um, for this denture system itself. This is the only system that is able to cure currently um, the Lucitone Digital Print with the Digital Cure coming later this summer. So what you'll be able to do is place two arches at a time. You, can, you want the anteriors facing each other, but always the tooth side facing up first. You'll select a program for the Lucitone Digital Print base. And basically you will then let that run. It will run automatically for 10 minutes and the lift will automatically happen for the system itself. Um, and then after the 10 minutes, it'll automatically activate a three minute cooldown by itself. At that point in time, it'll tell you to flip your device once the cooldown is complete. So you will do so exactly as it tells you, open up the door, pull out that uh, arch itself, and then just flip it uh, so that the integrio surface is facing up. Okay. Um, so remember, it is still partially cured, so gl wearing gloves is still ideal at this point. So then at this point in time, you'll again just hit start again, and it'll now do the same thing. 10 minutes with a 3-minute cooldown. Once your dentures are completed in the curing cycle, uh, it's then ready for finishing. Now, the really nice thing about the Lucitone Digital Print Denture System is whatever you typically do from an analog perspective, you will now do for a finishing perspective of uh, the Lucitone Digital Print. Okay, so the first thing that's important, of course, is removing those support tubes, right? 
So it doesn't matter what software you designed in, those support tubes are always needed for printing, just in, uh, ensures we keep the integrity of the entire arch. So we'll remove those um, at the lab bench and then polish off the kind of remaining sprue of that tube itself. Most people will use kind of a rounded carbide um, at the lab bench just to be able to remove that really easily and keep it flush with the remaining area of the palate or the lingual aspect of the lower denture. Um, following this, people will go ahead and do their usual, right? So if you'd like a lot of festooning or stippling, whatever it might be, people will add that in uh, and just ensure that they're doing their regular finishing, right? At this point in time, it now acts very much like a denture acrylic would. Um, so you're able to complete and finish this the same way that you typically would. Uh, we do recommend to avoid steam cleaning these uh, just as an FYI uh, when it does come time to, you know, following your polishing and things like that. You do want to ensure that you do not use a steamer on it. Um, so at this point in time, you'll see that this particular lab technician, he's adding some stippling and characterization to the actual facial aspect of this. Uh, and then we'll go in and, and do things like uh, rubber points on the lingual side. Um, and then what you'll see is people to start polishing, right? So when it comes to polishing, you know, whether it's pumice or high shine, uh, whatever you typically use with your dentures from an, an analog perspective, same rules apply here for a digital Lucitone digital print denture, okay? So you're able to basically, um, sometimes what people will use that works nicely to clean around the teeth is a bristle brush. And then at this point now you see us going in with the pumice and a clean rag wheel, okay? So we're going in just like we normally do. Um, people sometimes will tell us that, you know, you have to push a little bit harder um, with this material because of how strong it is, but really you're not reefing on it, okay? You don't have to, to really push hard, hard on it. Um, but maybe a little bit more than you're used to with uh, traditional dentures. So then we're going to remove all the extra pumice at this point in time. And then this is where we might see, um, you know, people use something like a high shine uh, acrylic um, with the polishing compound, again, just to get at that nice denture shine. Uh, we don't recommend polishing the intaglio or tissue surface, right? We just want to do the facial aspect and the teeth to ensure that we're getting really nice results there from an aesthetic perspective. At this point in time, uh, people will usually soak for five to 10 minutes in an ultrasonic bath. Again, avoid the steam cleaner if you can. Uh, light brush to remove any excess polishing compound is ideal. And that has been Lucitone Digital Print Training. Thank you so much.